strategy that's been very popular, but we haven't got on the feature match stage just quite yet. Yes. And if you're coming from a master duel, of course, math mech being <laughs> one of the top strategies a couple months ago. Yeah, once Circular got into the game, everyone like gravitated towards that. And speaking of math mech Circular, looks like Abel is going to start this match off with math mech Circular. So he's going to be able to send math mech Sigma from the deck to the graveyard to special summon that Circular. And uh, Sigma, because you don't control a monster in the extra monster zone, you're going to be able to special summon that card right out. That's right. And then Circular has the effect if a math mech is summoned, you can add a math mech. Uh, card. He's going to add Super Factorio. That trap card. Kind of like Tri Brigade Revolt a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Very powerful, but you can only maximize the value with that card if you can get three cards and maybe go into the XC summon of a Prime Math Mech, uh, Laplacian. Yep. And we're probably going to see an XC summon here for the Prime Math Mech, Alan Bershin. Alan Bershin is going to be able to get you either more follow-up or if you don't have something like math mech diameter you want to get to diameter as that is a key card for this strategy because anytime you use it as that material it's going to give that monster the ability to negate one of the opponent's cards for the turn mm -hmm. now math mech does come with a lot of restrictions uh because you're basically formulating an equation all into <laughs> that one answer at the end so there's uh battle-based restrictions and sometimes uh you have uh cyber restrictions as well Indeed, and it looks like he does add the diameter here off of the Alembertian. Let's see what he goes to do next. He still has his normal summon available because of that Mathematics Circular. Was able to reveal and special summon the hand, and um, the Sigma came back from the graveyard, so he could still summon the diameter. Diameter has another cool effect, too. Kind of like Wolf Bark, Coach Soldier Wolf Bark, uh, summon back a monster from the graveyard. Yes. Okay, looks like it was going to... Small World. ...like to use Small World, so he's going to reveal Effect Veiler, so he's going to be looking for a Light or a Level 1... Or, or Spellcaster. Spellcaster, or something with zero attack or zero defense, but only one of those things. Yes. <laughs> That's the tricky part with the Small World. If you play Small World, you better know your lines, or else yep. you're going to be stuck in that little position where, like, you can't get that. You can't get that. Okay, but we're looking into getting Light, uh, a Light Level 4... Oh, the deck is going into Cyburst. That is zigzagging all the way through. <laughs> Perfect. So this is a way to get to Parallel Exceed. Parallel Exceed is going to be a fantastic card in the strategy, especially when you're trying to go into stuff like Decode Talk or Heat Soul. Anytime you Link Summon, you just get basically either a free Rank 4 to the field or, you know, more monsters you can use as materials for Link Summons. Mm-hmm. And we're going to see how this is going to follow up. Now, Aaron being on Dark World... They play a lot of cards on their turn, and we're going to see how they can push all the way through. I, I feel like this matchup is actually favored for Dark World, maybe, because like if you can survive getting Laplacian and then uh, having like one of your cards negated and keep going, there's really not a lot their math mech can do to stop you. But mm -hmm. we'll see. It links, looks like he's going to link away the Alembertian for Ling Karibo, and then he's going to... Say Ling, oh, it's Parallel Exceed. Ling Karibo. Yeah, Ling Karibo. Ling Karibo. Yeah, you can't do Ling Karibo. Yeah, definitely Ling Karibo. Oh, yeah, absolutely, sorry. And uh, we get the summon of Parallaxy. Parallaxy summon out another Parallaxy. Of course, when they're special summon, their level drops to level 4. Yep. And that's two level 4s right now. A normal summon diameter. Sorry. And here comes the normal summon of diameter to bring back Math Mech Circular. Looks like he's going to go for 1, 2, three. 3. So showing you this is the power of using Parallaxy in the Math Mech deck. You're able to go into Laplacian right now on your very first turn. We're going to detach one for the effect. So detaching the different numbers can change up how many things you uh, get rid of. You can get rid of one monster, one spell or trap, and you can even hit one card in the hand. It's uh, front row, back row, and in hand. But if you did, that's if, only if you detach all three. Now, it really depends on how many you detach. If you go for all three, you basically go all the way. And don't forget, we did use the diameter as the material, so there is a negate for the turn. It's only lasting for this turn, but you yep. get to negate anything uh, for just for free. Yeah, so if you send something here that might have an effect... Oh, that reveals rainbow. the matchup right away. Rainbow? That is, I believe that's a, the new rainbow it from the structure the deck. Rainbow, the new general of Grafa's army. This rainbow feels like Grafa as well. I, I believe it's Simplest, discard effect adds, right? Yeah, I think is it a discard or is it a scent? Oh, it's only scent. Yeah, not discarded. These aren't danger monsters. Of <laughs> <laughs> Dark Worlds, they need to be discarded by a card effect yep. to get their effects. And Laplacian sends them to the graveyard. Definitely excellent. So it looks like he's going to link away the monsters. He wants to get those Mathematic monsters in the graveyard to bring them back with Super Factorial. And Splash Mage is very key in being able to access something like Deco Talk or Heat Soul. Splash Mage lets you special summon back a Cybers monster from the graveyard. And then you get to link in two monsters of different attributes. 
And we're going to Heat Soul, Deco Talker Heat Soul. And we're going to pay 1,000 life points to draw a card. That card is a quick effect, and you just get free cards. So good, yeah. Deco Tiger Heat Soul, very strong card. Basically, in, in Heat Soul's pocket is a little pot of greed right there. It's ready to pull cards out. Yep. <laughs> and a lot of times you see decks that use it like Mathmic, you're going to see a lot of those monster effects from the hands they're able to draw into stuff like Ash Blossom or mm -hmm. Ghost Mourner or Effect. We've already seen Effect Veiler from the Small World reveal. Yes. Now let's talk more about the card that was put into the grave after Aaron. It's not that bad because, of course, the new the new rainbow can special summon itself back out onto the field. So it's not a total it, loss there. Yep. You think it's returning a level five or lower, Dark World, or something like that? But I know you can't return Graffa. Graffa the one that you know. You <laughs> oh, just you can't bounce Graffa. I believe it's level uh, level eight. Okay. Anything level seven or lower, you can definitely bring back. Just locks out you from Graffa. You can still bounce back Silva and the like. Yes. Yeah. All right. Looks like. Mothman's going to discard Snow, special summon to the field, and get to draw a card. Now Snow's going to activate to add. And that's going to add Graffa himself. That's, this is really, really good. Yeah, I know Furman has been a servant of Graffa for some time now. He also brought this deck to the team YCS Las Vegas. And now that he's had some time under his belt, maybe he's mastered the deck a little bit more than he did at that tournament. It looks like that's Dark World Archives. What does the Archives do here? The archives, he's going to be able to get a free discard from his hand. Maybe he can discard this Graffa to boost up. You don't have to boost up a Dark World monster, but if he had one to boost, he could. But he can just discard the Graffa, go after that face down uh, spell and trap card, trying to force out maybe the Super Factorial. Mm hmm. Ooh, but we do see a Bell in Abel's hand. Bell going to be pretty good against Dark World since they do special summon from the graveyard quite often. Not going to be able to hit like the Graffa summoning or the Rainbow summoning, but if there's something that would target or special summon in the graveyard, maybe there'd be an opening there. Mm -hmm. Maybe Furman not so familiar with the Mathematic strategy. Take a moment to read the Super Factorial. Sure. Make, make sure it doesn't three. do more than what you think yeah. it does. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's always true. the good thing to check. It's likely that we're going to go for three monsters on this position. We're going for three monsters right away. I can't really see what the last monster is, but we do have a diameter. being. That's the one that matters. And we are going to see another Laplacian onto the field. Yeah, Furman does have a monster on the field and a spell and trap card, so he's probably going to detach three here to go after the monster, the back row, and the card in hand. Oh, did he chain the oh, thing? No. Oh, he chained it to the archives activation, it looks like. Was that the fusion? Oh, it's not. It's That's not. Oh, it's not a session. It's not archives. It's a session. Okay, I couldn't tell because his hand was covering it. But he used the fusion spell. Okay, I couldn't tell, and it looked like the other one. But now they're very similar. They, they do look similar very from similar. a distance. Uh, but yeah, this is way better for Furman than an archives because now he's able to send those cards to the graveyard. Has the Graffa where he's going to be able to negate an effect. Let's see which effect is going to go through a little bit better. One changes the effect so that you discard a card. So it it's not functions, necessarily functions negate, like negate. It functions like a negate. <laughs> functions like a negate. <laughs> Essentially. I mean, everyone loves putting the card. Replacing an effect is almost better. Especially in Dark World when they're going to be discarding cards from your hand and triggering their effects. Now remember, a lot of Dark World effects, they're mandatory. So it does mess up some of the chain links for people. Like, True. oh, I'm using an optional trigger. Like, but I'm still going to be chain link one. Yep. <laughs> Got to do the, place the mandatory ones on the chain first. I think we're going for two. That Lovelacian's pretty good. Now, if Lovelacian's going to activate, if Graffa changes the effect, Lovelacian can attempt to negate the mm -hmm. changing of the effect, so, it's, so it kind of counters each other right there. Yeah, it doesn't look like Aaron might be too familiar with the strategy, not knowing that, yeah, Diameter is the thing that gives that bonus effect to negate a card for the... Well, you had a chance to do one card till the end of the turn. Yeah. It only gives that bonus effect just for a short period of time. Yeah, just for one turn. It and seems that. like they have it every time, every single yeah. turn, because they just keep summoning that diameter back <laughs> exactly. over and over again. I know Master Duel players definitely experienced <laughs> that firsthand. <laughs> All right, hits Dark Ruler no more. Oh, Not any value there? No value. No, I don't know if he's discarding the Dark Ruler no more for the Graph effect or if it was from the Laplacian, but... I mean, you can go to battle phase and just clear off some monsters right now. It's huge. Not to mention that paying life points and reducing your life points against a Dark World deck is very dangerous. Because mm -hmm. Dark Worlds, they can do so much damage in such a short amount of time that basically taking 2,000 damage off of your own life is one monster less that they need to commit into. It really is. Now, let's see what... I think he's resolving snow here. So it does look like the Laplacian negated and destroyed the Graffa. Graffa also has the effect, I believe, if he's destroyed by a opponent's card effect, to summon Graffa from your graveyard, I believe, or deck. 
Like the uh, yes. the end. I, know, I believe it comes from the banish. Oh, from the banish. From the banish, but you assassin, you you basically you banish the graph from the graveyard, mm. and then if the fusion graph gets uh, sent away, gets removed, then you get to bring back the graph that you banished. Ooh. But he adds a uh, the Gintra. Oh, Gintra's wonderful card. One Super. of the best it, cards in the deck. Yeah, no, he does summon from the graveyard. It looks like he is going to use that graph effect to summon back Grapha. Yes. <laughs> Fusion Grapha summons the monster effect Grapha. Yes. And yeah, the, yeah, the, the Gintra is really good because, yeah, the gates... The problem with gates is you need a Dark World monster in your graveyard to draw it, right? Mm -hmm. So now you need to discard that fiend to add the gates is really, really powerful. Now we can get there. Normal. We're going to... Normal summon. Going to... Oh, he's going to return it to his hand for hand. Grapha. Makes sense. Or for Rainbow. Rainbow. Rainbow can go back to half of the Grapha. Just getting all these cards back in the hand so they can reuse them later on. The Genta is also now live, and, and there is a card to discard in hand for the additional draw and get more cards because that is a Rainbow. Rainbow is also not once per turn. Furman putting on a Dark World, Dark World Clinic. Yeah, I really felt like this matchup is in his favor just because while as strong as the Mathmech deck is, if it can't stop you, it doesn't have too much more interaction. I think we uh, Abel may be out of interactions at this point. The Factorio's gone, the Negation's gone, the hand uh, ripping is also gone. And I believe the drawing effect from uh, the Deco Taka Heat Soul has also been used, seeing that he's at 6,000 life points now. Indeed. So he just has to find a way to clear this board and do a little bit more damage. He's going to add Silva here. And don't forget, the gates also boost Fiend Monsters on the field by 300. So that's, that's why I mean when I said that you only need one less monster because if you have Graph, that's 3,000. Rainbow's already at 3,000 on its own, so that's already 6,000 damage. There's no, you don't have to commit much more after you clear the field. Now he's going to use Gentra to add Gates again. A search effect for the field spell, that is also not once per turn, but the summon back from, from Genta is once per turn. Yep, been able to get a bunch of gates and then use your gates discarding snow. It's always a fit. That's the OG mm -hmm. one-two punch. Yes. Just draw a card, add any Dark World card. Who feels good. Now we also have to think about the extra deck. The extra deck could really pack a punch here. So he's going to use the gates to banish the snow, discard snow to draw. I believe that was a Dark Ruler really no more just drawn. Snow is now activating, giving you any Dark World card. Wait, you're talking about the extra deck. What are some things you might be able to access here to clear the board? I mean, he's already got so much damage on the board. Access to, you know... I would think cards like Dingirzu, uh, that's a pretty good option because that just lets you use their elevates. And since you're just generating level 8s nonstop, it's a one way to just send a card to the graveyard, for instance. Some people in their Dark World decks, they also play cards like... Um, uh, access to get to uh, the Numeron Drake, Jagubian, and just do a one punch oh, I love right that there. Card. <laughs> that card is so good. I right, couldn't see which spell card he had to hand with Snow. I can't ever tell if it's Archives or Accession. I think that, that, that one, one looks like Archives. But if, if Aaron is able to put another level 8, that is even scarier. Archives does boost the tax of uh, your Dark World monster, so I could see him go for that too, but now he's going to discard it, add a third copy of Gates to the hand. You can use all three copies of your field spell in one turn. <laughs> so almost feels like Upstart Goblin, almost. <laughs> or Chicken Game, or something like that. Yeah. yeah, Furman really showing he is a master of this Dark World deck, why he is sitting here with an 8-2 and two record with one round to go. He's literally two wins away from making the top 64 with the Dark World strategy. Now, there's multiple ways to clear off some of the monsters, but the zoning for Abel is pretty good. There's uh, cards like, that's pretty popular. You can recycle some of your own cards by giving them, say, Cerule. You can bounce it back to your hand with, mm. like, a Kashyyyk Magician and then give it back to them and try to <laughs> get, get rid of Silva to just, like, get rid of cards in their hand, put them at the bottom of the deck. There are many, many, many ways. I think we're going into a Link Summon. Yep, it's going to be a link to 
It's Muckraker. Ooh, Muckraker is really cool. So I, when I first saw this card, I was like, oh, this is a Dark World card. It lets you discard a card and special summon back a fiend from your graveyard. Yeah, very specific. And the I believe the discarding is not even the cost. It's an effect. <laughs> Which works perfect <laughs> in the Dark World deck. I love Muckraker. If you can cycle the uh, graph up multiple times, that's, that could be the entire field. There's just so many ways. Yeah, the Dark World deck is really, like, it's a fun deck to play because there's so many flexible spots for you. Okay, this one is yes. Archives, so we're going to discard to boost the attack of Graffa. And there's the additional discard and draw. There's a silver right there. Oh, there's going to be a lot of monsters being summoned out now. Yep, since he discarded a Fiend, he's able to discard a card to draw two. And discard Silva, adds Graffa. Silva's going to special summon to the field. Yeah, it's a mandatory. It has to summon. And that also opens up a rainbow again. <laughs> this is just a clinic. Like, it seemed like he only had a couple cards in his hand, and now he's up to five with a full board. I don't think I don't think Abel has any interaction left. No, he's probably just enjoying the show right now. He's like, all right. He's made, I would be thinking about game two. What can I side? Like, I mean, this is the time to do it. You, know, you get a little more time to think about what you're going to side. What am I going to take out? Card destruction. Oh, relentless, my. It's relentless. This is going to reveal. I think it might give Abel an opportunity to draw into other cards, but I, know, I don't know if it's enough, though. <laughs> That's a lot of cards. <laughs> oh my! Card destruction, one of my favorite. It's funny at the what was it, the hundredth, I believe, yep. was where Dark World won the tournament. Could it win 150 YCSs later on? That would be those Mike Ballin back then. That would be so crazy if we could see that happen again. We have gotten to the third monster now. Now that we are at 6,000 life points, now there's two monsters on the field, but there's the attack boost that might cancel out on the Lingaribo. I believe Lingo has 300 attack? Uh, three, yeah, it's three, less than 500. Less than sure. 500, so something pretty... It's 300 pretty makes sense for a Karibo, right? <laughs> so in that case, the uh, the Dark World field, uh, field spell might just kind of counter that, making that essentially zero. Furman's, Is there? He's going to give, he's like, you don't have enough monsters, let me go and give you this Cerule, and now you're going to have to discard a card from my hand. Let's see if he's going to discard the Silva. The silver. Oh, yep. the hand. Furman just really putting on a clinic, showing off what you can do with Dark World. It's such a cool deck. One it's thing I find interesting about Dark World is oh, the entire game for Dark World is compacted into one turn. Mm -hmm. You need to survive that one turn. Hold on for dear life. Yeah, exactly. If you don't survive that one turn, the game is 90% of the time done. Now, now, while Dark World is super powerful, it does have some hard counters. Like, what do you do when you get Droll and Lockbird in this deck? As we've seen, he's been drawing, he's been adding... Droll something to avoid. Maybe they could use like cross out designator, call by the grave or something. But no droll here from Abel has been just. just I think it's been tough. <laughs> it's really tough. Trying to just establish any level of a board to survive on is going to be very difficult. Mm -hmm. As we you can see, we drew so many cards. We searched so many cards. Going to activate a lure of darkness here. Doesn't have enough quite yet. Going to banish the danger Bigfoot from the hand. Is there enough damage here? If there's not, I'm sure he can get there. Abel not wanting to concede, just being like, "No, show me what you, show me what you got. Like, <laughs> bring it out." I, I don't know if I want to see the full Dark World turn. Personally, I like, this is the time where I, maybe because like if we have to go into game two, I'd rather have the additional time to prepare to counter all those different lines. <laughs> or perhaps maybe you're right. He's thinking about how he's going to side out. You just yeah, take advantage of the time potentially. But we see Graffa, Graffa. Oh, oh, he card destruction into Nibiru. Furman, what did you do? That was the risk that we we just mentioned. Oh no! He's gonna have a really big token, though. Probably the biggest Nibiru token I've ever seen. Yep. I, uh, History's biggest Nibiru token, uh, right here. It has to be, right? <laughs> this one, there's no graph. Normally, the fusion graphic can prevent a scenario like this one, but drawing the card destruction, oh, the card destruction, drawing cards from it led to this Nibiru. I don't think uh, there's any cybers lock or anything. That is a lot of monsters. I don't. I don't think I can do the math on this one. I'm not gonna try. Uh, I'll, yeah, let's see. I can see from his calculator. Maybe we'll be able to see the end result. Original tech. Okay. All right. So 27. Oh no, Furman, pull your head back. <laughs> I can't see your calculator anymore. I can try. <sighs> I'm not even it's trying like that. It's infinite. Like, <laughs> just, just give it the infinity symbol. Like, if, if it survives, it's going to be able to do enough damage. Yeah, there, you can win. You, you won't be damage. able to attack over it, I swear. <laughs> There's enough damage for multiple games right there. <laughs> <laughs> you did 
sixteen thousand damage. We're just done. It's <laughs> over. Your life points are taken away from the next game. Oh, that would be hilarious. Yeah, just double check my work. It's a lot. But there is also like <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> Nibir crashing down to the field just in time. It, it really was. Cause yeah, we could see Abel's hand. He didn't have any sort of interaction. And that card detection breathing life. Abel look, looks a little bored, but normally you'd think he would want to be adding it up. But he probably knows it doesn't really matter how big it is. It, it's I, over, it's I, over I, 10. It's like, it has to be over 16,000, I think. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. We got just the, Cerule, Silva, Double Graffa, Muckraker. I wish I could see the number he wrote down. Oh, it's just can't quite make it out. It's like 18,500? I can't. I can't really. <laughs> something <laughs> something, <laughs> something ridiculous. I'll let you guys at home add it all up and try and figure it out. See how close you can get to the actual Nibiru token stat line. But we're likely going to see that token probably in defense mode so we can minimize the mobility so. of that car. You, know, you don't want to give it to attack mode. Just he still hasn't had his battle phase yet. So. Yeah. It's going to be very difficult to change the attack position. <laughs> so, he still may be able to win this turn, honestly. I mean, he, I mean, has, big, he has Bigfoot and Snow in his hand, so if he can reveal Bigfoot, discard that Snow, that's 3,000 damage on the board. Snow can maybe continue on. We'll have to see what else he has. Oh, I would love to see the Nibiru just being played right through. Like, oh, destroyed got five of my monsters? Uh, that's fine. I'll just keep going. I'll just keep going. <laughs> if he can actually land just one... One Dark World monster. And all that stuff in the graveyard just going to come right back to the field, right back to the hand. Yep, you can summon back the rainbow, and then the rainbow goes back to summon back the Grafa. Now, did the, um, the accession, the, the, the fusion spell, mm -hmm. that's still in the graveyard. That card can potentially just uh, discard another card as well. True. All right, finally, after some calculations, the token... <laughs> Vern's like, you sure you don't want to attack mode? Just attack for game over that Nibiru? <laughs> All right, let's see if he's able to follow up his plays. Sometimes you fly too close to the sun, you get burned. Yeah. Herman was definitely flying close to the sun on that one. He does have an allure of darkness as well in hand. Doesn't are even... we going to see a pass or passing turn? Now, Math Mac, they've already burned most of their cards as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know how far you go. Oh, we're going to see a session. A session. So he's Bigfoot gonna, discarded. Just going to destroy the Nibiru. Well, let's see if we can see that token in action. <laughs> All right, now it's, Furman is relying on this rainbow to finish things off here. Able, think maybe down to three cards in hand? I think the, that Grapha will probably hold its own here. Being able to change the effect, maybe there's going to be even more disruption if something tries to happen. We're going to see a normal summon of effect failure. I think he's just going to attack. I think that's his last card in hand. Oh, no, he has Sigma, so he can bring back Sigma. Sigma. But that'll just get negated by Grapha. Pretty sure it can negate effects as well as activations. Yes. Now, Grapha is very specific on what it can change. It's uh, normal spell and trap cards mm -hmm. and monster effects. Yep. So you can't stop like the quick play stuff like True. Theosis, Book of Moon. Book of, Book of Moon, Moon, a good yeah, way to add really, it. Really, yeah, exactly. And yeah, Furman not as familiar, making sure there's nothing he might not know. He's going to go ahead and try and cut Abel off here from bringing back and it's Sigma. Snow. So Snow has an effect. He was discarded by the opponent. I think he can special summon a monster from the opponent's graveyard. I believe so. If that is discarded by the opponent, it is an opponent's card. Yeah. So, yeah, because the, the graph is like that dark, dark deal. Yeah. <laughs> You've made a dark deal with me. Now I must yeah. take your monster. Go for the diameter for me. <laughs> <laughs> he could just grab Parallel Exceed. Can you take the Sigma? Yeah. No, you could just take the Sigma, too. But I do, able, no, there we he go. has a face of attack, <laughs> effect veiler, no card. <laughs> and we're moving on into game two. I wonder who's going uh, to take first here. Has to do There's no way. He's going to start with Signet Mining, discarding Signet Mining. All right. Well, at least you can get value out of both of them. At least one can be used to pay costs. We're going to see the Math Mech Circular. Uh, circular Special Summon. And we got the Sigma into the graveyard. Effect of Sigma to Summon. Bread and butter here from Math Mech. Two plus two equals four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good at doing math. See, the thing about math is consistent. It's, yeah. You get the same answer every time. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and now, looks like 
going to just link away the circular here. I think we're, I think we're doing the same play again once yep. again. We're going to go into the Lingaribo. Lingaribo into Parallax Seas. Oh, you called it. This is cool. Yeah, the Parallax Seed in the Mathematic isn't something... I mean, I'm sure it's popular. It's the Parallax Seed really popular in the Cybers Link decks, but I really like the way Abel's using it here. But this time, not taking all three into the Laplacian. We're going to go for uh, Alan Bershon. Yep, and that's going to probably add a uh, diameter. And we have a not normal summoned. Yeah, and he didn't, he wasn't able to use the circular effect to add factorial here with this uh, line yet either. Or did he? I mean, I think I might have missed it. He might have added the factorial. He might have, yeah, he did. Yeah, he, yeah. He, added, he added the factorial from the Sigma yeah, summon. The Sigma as per summon. usual. Yes. Consistent. There's a, there's a lot of consistency. <laughs> and uh, there's more searches to come if you can get into the extra deck. Oh, summon, diamond right? normal summon. And we got the three, but what, where are we going to take this? Oh, something different now. It's going to be a link two. Is it going to be the Splash Mage or Cyber's Wicked? We are seeing Cyber's Wicked. And then here comes the three. So he, we Abel's showing him. he has a lot of different ways to get to that same result that he did in game one. Yes. And uh, we are seeing the detach. And we're going to hit one card out of the hand. And it does send. Is it a danger monster? Nope. It's Genta. Well, we look. Genta can still get banished and summon itself back onto the field. And if you can get one of the graveyard monsters, bounce right back into the hand and just useful use it again. <laughs> yeah, I think Dark World monsters are just useful in the graveyard. Even if they're not triggering when they get yeah. sent from your hand, still useful. And it looks like he's going to add a diameter to the hand. I think that was off the Cyber's Wicked. Yes, because he did banish uh, for that play. And then he gets to link in two Decode Talker Heat Sold. Two monsters, different attributes. Link three, going to pay a 1,000 to draw a card. Or we're going to see another Nibiru. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the one card that, yes, you're going first. Will it be useful? I would say so. The, the turn's so compressed, and there's so many special summons. It might still be worth it. It could save you. True. And now Furman is going to draw yeah. two five in hand since he lost one of his starting cards. Now, Abel kept a lot of... Oh, anti-spell fragrance, like you there called it. it. No spell streak. Does he have a chain, though? He could chain... The fusion spell for Dark Wolves is a quick play. Yes. Um, and you could get that discard, too. Yep. So that would be huge, but he doesn't have it. Looks like he revealed a danger monster. Couldn't see which one it was. But he's starting to shovel his hand. This might prompt a response of Factorial. Yep. We yep. are seeing Factorio. Factorio for three. I, I, it has to be for three, and there's going to be a diameter in there. That's going to aim to try to protect that anti-spell fragrance from going too far. And we don't want to... Uh, Abel definitely doesn't want to lose that anti-spell fragrance. Hit a spell. Yep, I believe that's Archives. It's tough to tell, but Danger Bigfoot does summon to the field and draws into an Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. So now the Laplacian effect is going to activate. He's going to send a card from... Just one? Just one. Just one. From the hand... Only rolling numbers you can't choose. Four. The last card at the end. Ooh, Chupacabra. That could... Chupacabra's only something from the graveyard, right? Yeah, no danger monsters yeah. in the graveyard. Jackalope's only something from the deck. Oh, that cannot be activated. Anti-spell fragrance. That needs to be set first. <laughs> that needs to be set first. We are moving <laughs> on to the next game. The anti spell put in too much work there. Let's see how it's going to play out. Intra is going to discard to add gates. Now, is there a Droll and Lockbird? Does, does he have a call by the grave or anything to stop Droll? Oh, no. Now, just because you're hit by a Droll and Lockbird doesn't mean it's the end yet. Nope, oh, now it, it does. Uh, now it does. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. We saw anti spell in game one, Droll and Lockbird game two. Side deck cards coming into play here in the late round of Swiss. Now, Math Mac isn't a deck that is weak on going second. They have a lot of powerful ways to push. They have that one Cyber's Link monster that's quite strong. Yeah, something it? called an Axis oh, Code Talker. That's, yeah, it. that's the one. <laughs> Update Jammer, Axis Code Talker. Those cards seem to work really well together. I'm surprised that the community has uh, <laughs> started to, you know, really not too fond of the update jammer part of this. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, if you can update jammer to access code talker, that's 4,300 twice. That's just uh, so much damage so fast. But now, it looks like Furman letting his opponent play, not using his spell and trap card quite just yet. The circular sent the Sigma, and then now the Sigma spells someone back. 
But is this something that you plan for? Like, you know that going into game three, there are probably going to be drawn log. Oh, games. yeah. Like, like maybe that wine card could be enough. Maybe it's like a dimensional barrier cutting certain lines off. But if you're going to access code, you might still have to eat it. And now he's going to overlay for Alan Burshin. So he's going to detach two here to try and add a Mathemat card from the hand. I think this is going to prompt Herman to flip his uh, Spell and Trap card he has set. I know what it is because I saw it in his hand. Oh, what was it? Skill Drain. Oh! That's why I was wondering why he he was try deciding not to use it. He wanted to wait to use on the Seize Monster, but that gave Abel that opportunity to add um, the Mathemat card that spells someone's back from the graveyard. Mm-hmm. This is uh, really good. I mean, we might get the turn back if the turn does come back. Oh, no. Yeah, Skill Drain doesn't really stop any of the Dark World monsters. They're just giant beat sticks at the end of the day. Yep. <laughs> This is, I guess this would be the perfect answer. I mean, Abel needs to think about what he needs to do. Everything that he does needs effects now. Access Code Talker, not as good versus Skill Drain. Well, there is a Book of Eclipse. Book of Eclipse is definitely not going to help here. I mean, if he chained it to chained the to Skill Drain, gets to add a Mathematic card, does but that help? Because you still have the Skill Drain you have to deal with. I think, yeah, he's going to probably hold the Book of Eclipse to use it like, as a defensive option, mm -hmm. which maybe he'll just try and stop an onslaught of uh, Dark World attacks or something like that. Yep. And even after that, that Book of Eclipse could lead to a ton of cards being drawn. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Abel's going to need to find a way. To, I mean, Skill Drain in the side for Dark World is huge because when you're playing against Dark World, you're not going to be siding in that spell and trap card removal. In fact, if you have some in your main deck, you're probably siding it out against Dark World because it's such a heavy combo mm -hmm. deck. But then the players can take advantage of that knowledge to side in cards like Skill Drain. Yep. This is just classic Dark World. Skill Drain Gates. Yep. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this is way back when the uh, first Dark World structure deck came out. Yeah, the, this is cool. And now Gates is going to vanish the Gintro, so that'll be able to special summon back. And now he's going to try and discard, but Ash Blossom is going to stop him from discarding a drawing. Will this Skill Drain be enough to get Furman back into it? That is good. I was wondering how they were countering Droll and Lockbird. Yeah, Skill Drain's a good way. Called by the Graves, another one, but... I, I like the cards that are trap cards that can get, mm -hmm. get you your turn back because it's, like, the least expected, and it has, like, the more long-term impact overall. You're not doing one-for-one one trades. Like, now the whole game is di different. You know, welcome to my game now. This is my house. <laughs> <laughs> the Mothman discarded Silva, so it's going to spell summon Mothman to the field. Fern's going to draw a card, and since Silva was discarded, it's going to spell summon Silva from the graveyard to the field. I mean, he's going to try to discard to add another copy of Gates of the Dark World. Now, there are many ways to keep on going with the Dark World deck. And we're going to see if that is going to be a, like a necessity here. Yeah, I think Kermit only has one other card in hand, so maybe if it's a Snow, he has, can do something here. But there's probably, you can overlay the two fours, because we do have a, a Mothman, and that's a Genta, and uh, because those it, two are fours... It was a Snow. It was a Snow, because we don't have to go into Dugaris to get the additional draw and discard. That's such a good card, too. Oh, Dugaris, yeah, super good in Dark World. Not so good while Skill Drain's up, but a really good card yes, to like, keep true. yourself going. And it looks like he's going to add a session. I, I can never tell if it's a session it's or archive just because of the they're glare. All purple they're all yeah. purple cards. The super rare foiling kind of makes it difficult from this angle. But we'll be able to tell as soon as he activates it. Now, that is a fusion spell that can only be used during the main phase. True. Even though it is a quick play spell. We're going to overplay onto the field spell. We're going to get another Gates. Third copy of Gates of the Underworld. And that is a rainbow. Rainbow effect. Going to add a level 5 or higher Dark World monster into the hand. Oh, yeah. This is going to... Unless Abel has something rainbow? sneaky, this might be it. Now, did he keep... Did he keep that copy of Nibiru in there? Or that face down? But that's probably... Uh, I don't even know what that face down could be. It's level 7 or lower. Yeah, maybe you just misread it there. Level, level 7 or lower. No. Is it lower or higher? It's lower, right? Because you can't return Grapha with it. You can't return yeah. Grapha. Yeah, so it's level 7 or lower. Yeah. Right, that was the Book of Eclipse. How did I forget this? So that's going to put his monster's face down. Can we continue through this with only the two remaining zones available? Doesn't look. He might be looking to flip his monsters up in the end phase and draw some cards here. It's a three-card draw. He does. It looks like he drew into another copy of Skill Drain too. 
Now, but if you did get the uh, accession, you could just fuse off some of the monster. But it does look like he grabbed archives. First effect. They ruled it at last event. Yeah, you do not need to boost a Darkhold monster to activate the effect. That is right. That is the right ruling. But it looks like we're going to take a minute to double check with the judges. But due to the wording of archives, you're able to discard a card even if you're not boosting a Darkhold monster because he doesn't require you to boost a Darkhold monster. Mm -hmm. It's just an optional. Uh, bonus effect there at the end of that one. Well, as long as you're getting one of those effects off. This has been a good match, though. I mean, this, I mean, even if uh, Abel survives this turn, Furman does have another copy of Skill Drain, so if he draws into just a single, like, Cosmic Cyclone or something to get rid of the Skill Drain, he'll have another one in advance. But if it gives Abel a chance to draw into Harvey's Feather Duster... Mm -hmm. That might be something to bounce him back into this game, but Furman's going to have a, a grip of cards after he draws at the end phase from this. There's like a chart that says, like, if you do, Paige, I'll post in the judge group. They're currently still going through a ruling consultation. Now, if you do load your hand full of cards as Dark World, passing back. Like, the, the scary part would be able, of course, clearing off the skill drain and getting to access code. But I don't, I'm not sure if there's, a, like, a lot of options while you're under skill drain to get that or, damage in. Or, I mean, even if he has those options in his deck. Like, I can't imagine going second against Dark or Yeah, he go complicated <laughs> situations. But maybe they got it resolved now that we're back in the game. Yeah. They figured out that he could discard the card, I think. Or maybe they said he I, couldn't. I don't see the Graffa in the graveyard anymore. Interesting. I guess the, the he lost the appeal, and now he's going to... Tribute Summon? Okay, Tribute Summon for Graffa. You know, still not out of options just yet. Sacrificing two card draws for the Tribute Summon to attack over Alan Burton. Now, if we're still under the skill drain, it's still yep. really good. Still the highest attacking monster. End phase, flip face up, and draw a card from the Book of Eclipse, if you guys don't remember. Right now, Abel's going to have to navigate through the skill drain somehow, and Graffa. I think it's still going to hold really, really well. He does have Sigma that he can summon from the graveyard. That's one so monster. Okay. I don't think I, mean, that I don't know what he's I don't, he's just kind of shaking his head like I don't know where he's going. Yeah, I, don't, he, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think anything in the extra deck can out this Graffa. Is that an addition? Oh, addition. Is that a subtraction? Or is it subtraction? That's a subtraction. Subtraction. You can tell by the weapon that they're holding. <laughs> like, uh, addition has a plus. And here's the minus card. symbol. Yeah, this one yeah. has a minus because it's a one line sword. It's a, it's a fun way if you can't tell the difference between these monsters because they look very, very similar. Indeed, they do. We're going to see a third monster, perhaps? Abel What's taking a deal? chance to check his extra deck, check his extra deck again. <laughs> He needs to make some plays here. I don't know where he's like where his plays are even going, but he's gonna. Yeah, I'm just skill drain. It's just it looks like he's heavy. just kind of burning time. If you had to ask me, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know for sure what he where he's going. I could be wrong. But we do probably have a time extension from the the judge call. Potential. So he links into update jammer. Update jammer does have a pretty high attack for a, a link two monster, if I remember correctly. Now he's using equation to special summon back a mathematic from the graveyard. I believe it also has a bit of an attack boost. 1,000. Ooh. I think. But in defense mode. Like, <laughs> not going to be here. relevant here. Normal summons diameter, no effect because of skill drain. He's just playing cards, it looks like, at this point. Going to link four, maybe going to Axis Code Talker. But Axis Code Talker will activate the will... <laughs> no, effects negate. Oh, I can see where this is going. Axis Code Talker technically can banish itself yeah. off of the field to destroy Oh, cards. Okay. The subtraction also reduced the attack of oh, Graffa. Oh, because I forgot he subtracted the Graffa, yeah. So he did have a way to clear the board. Interesting. Because the update jammer still works because it was yeah. sent to the graveyard. So that's still two attacks. However, the skill drain's still there. That's not a very big access <laughs> code talker. Only 2,300. Hey, I forgot about the subtraction. Losing the attack. So definitely not the worst here from Abel. But I but think if the turn has to pass back, uh, there's a lot of risk. 
So he's going to go ahead and banish the access code to destroy gates. So that does open up a little bit of play. That's a, that's a not very bad. creative not way. Very creative way. Impressive. Yeah, impressed by Abel's play here. Found a way to go through this. But oh. now he's going to summon snow, return to snow, summon bad Grafa. Okay, for, oh, we're going to maximize Rainbow. here. Rainbow, Rainbow to Grafa, but Rainbow has the higher attack. Oh, yeah, we're just loading up on more resources. Now he's probably going to use the Mothman effect from hand. Or archives. Now that he has a Dark World monster on the field, since that's the way it's going to be ruled this weekend, that you can discard a Dark World. Uh, yeah. Now, since Rainbow is discarded, he's going to add a level 5 or higher, and he's going to be able to discard 1 to draw 2. He's going to be able to get the snow after he resolves Rainbow. Dropping any card, grabbing another copy of Grapha. Yeah, only 3 minutes left on the clock, so he's going to need to play a little quicker. And we're going to see the uh, accession. A session. Yep. Now when I see them right next to each other, it's easy to kind of tell the difference when you, there's just one and the other. A session's a little bit more brown. Little, yeah, a little darker. Um, a session has been activated. We're going to see a little bit of a fusion. These are both uh, discarded, so I believe Nessie is also going to go off as well after the Grapha comes onto the field. Yep, Abel not conceding quite just yet. Decides he wants to see. I mean, we did see the Nibiru mm -hmm. in game one, and now the skill drains up. He's not going to be able to change that Nibiru effect. Well, if the Bigfoot lands onto the field now, then that would be. It would be enough. That would be enough damage. But that's going to be a bit of a risk. You're going to have to get a little bit lucky that the, the Bigfoot does not get sniped out if that does happen. But we're just going to go into battle phase. And we're going to attack with both Grapha and the Fusion Grapha. Yep, doesn't have another way to get a monster on the board, it looks like. Maybe he doesn't want to risk using the Mothman, I guess. But now that the access code talker is gone, are we going to pass turn? But the, what is what is left under to play under Skill Drain? Yeah, I'm shocked that he didn't use the Bigfoot to try and just summon it. He's using it main phase 2 now? Okay. So, main phase two, he's going to... Hit the Mothman. Summon the big... Furman, why did you do this before you attacked? Was it his fifth summon, maybe? It might have been his fifth summon. I think that's what it was. And he wanted to make sure he could get the damage in just in case that last card in hand was Nibiru. Yep. So, kind of heads up play here from Furman. And a session just got added back to hand. Discarding the Snow. Snow is going to proceed to get another Dark World card from the deck. I think there's a lot of Dark World cards already. There's not even much of the Dark World names left. <laughs> yep, looks like he's just going to grab another general rainbow. Now, I love the evolution of decks over the years. <laughs> I love Grafa's army. Never quite goes all the way away. But now if Furman wins this game, he will only be one round away from making top 64 with the Dark World deck. Abel draws the two cards in hand. It's sign at mining, discarding, sign at mining. Um, well... well I don't know what card he can add here that will help him and save him versus skill drain. I don't think Grapha will work here because you're still under your own skill drain and your discard is by effect. Or the changing of the effect is probably not going to work here. But he can chain, yeah, so he's going to use the effect to negate and then chain the accession to get the Grapha off the field so it will no longer be on the field to be negated by skill drain. So he's going to be able to turn that sign up mining into a discard. That will get rid of everything. There's no cards yeah. left. You know, I got to get to Abel. Even when he's facing defeat, will not scoop. Yes. <laughs> he has zero cards in all these games, but <laughs> never gives up. You got to have that fighter mentality. Oh, no, oh not, now he sees the writing on the wall.